Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third webinar of WSO2 Integration Studio 2019 series. I'm Praveen Nadaraja, software engineer at WSO2. And here with, I have Rosen Silva, who is a senior software engineer at WSO2 Enterprise Integrator team. So let's have a look what's on today's agenda. We will have an introduction on de debugging integration flows and the steps involved in debugging process. Then we will have a look on what's new in WSO2 Integration Studio. Then we will see how to run and debug a service with built-in server as well as external server runtime. We will see the usage of HTTP dialogs in the debug flow and how to add and remove debug points in the integration flow. We, we are also going to see how to skip a mediator and manipulate properties in the debugging flow. Finally, we will see how to debug a data mapper mediator with real-time viewer. Now let's go to introduction. So in the context of software engineering, debugging is a process of fixing a bug in the software. So bug basically means a error or a failure, or we can say a fault. In other words, debugging, it refers to identifying the bug, analyzing the bug, and removing the error. This activity begins after the software fails. That means the debugging activity will start when the software fails to execute properly and concludes by solving the problem and successfully testing the software. So it is con uh, so debugging is considered as an extremely complex and tedious task because errors need to be solved at all the stages of debugging. So now we'll see the debug process here. So when we come to debug process, we, we can basically conclude in the four steps. The first one is reproduce the problem. So when you encounter any error in the, our uh, flow, then we have, to, we have to try to reproduce that issue locally. So that's the first step means. Second step, we have to describe the bug. That means like we have to try to get as much as input from the user to get the exact reason. So why the bug is happening. Then we have to capture and analyze the bug. So where is the bug is coming? And uh, this we can uh, capture the bug based on the stack, stack trace we are getting on the console. Then uh, we have to analyze the stack trace. And we have to find the, finally, we have to, uh, we have to find the bug. As a step, fourth step, we have to fix that bug. So debug process that consists of mainly these three, uh, four process. So now let's see what is new in the integration studio. So we have added a micro integrator in the integration studio. So this will make the user experience better. So if we see in the earlier versions of uh, integration studio, we had to add all the artifacts to the carbon application and we have to export the, that carbon application, application to the enterprise integrator and start the server. But now with the help of the micro integrator, with the single click, we will be able to add all the artifacts in the all the artifacts. So this is the major improvement we have done in the latest integration studio. Then uh, we have uh, integrated uh, visual debugging capabilities. So um, uh, compared to the earlier version, so now we have the, the visual debugging capability we have improved here. And the real time data transformation view, viewer is there in the new integration studio and the seamless deployment experience for on-premise. Uh, that is like basically Docker and uh, WSO2 integration cloud. 
and we have added like we have more than uh, 200 plus connectors and in the quick start we have hundreds of pre-built uh, integration templates where you can try it out so now we will see how to install the enterprise integrator and how to start so first you have to download the enterprise uh, in, uh, you have to download the integration studio so you can use the the link here for mac users you have to just open the dmg file and copy the enterprise integrator tooling application into the applications folder for windows and linux users you just have to extract the file and start the integration studio executable you will see a getting started page click on the samples you like and you can try it out so when you click the link, so it will direct to the our integration studio page. And in the downloads, you can see we have the several distributions for the different environments. You can have uh, the Mac, Linux, as well as Windows. So enter the email ad address and just click the download button. So you will uh, the, the integration studio will be get downloaded. So here I have already downloaded the integration studio the dmj file so i'm just trying uh, just double click on it so you will get a, a screen like this so what you have to do basically you have to just drag and drop the integration studio into the applications folder yeah, so now we have successfully added the integration studio application to the application folder let's uh, let's see uh, and open it Click open. Now you'll get a uh, the starting page here. So you have to select the uh, workspace and click launch. So once you launch it, so this is the getting started page. So here you, you can see there are many sample templates here. And uh, you can try it out like one by one. So this is the hello world service proxy as a soap service and so on so now we'll just try to deploy and debug with the internal runtime so and uh, so what we have to basically do so you have to always create a composite application then you have to then uh, right click on that composite application and you have to select run as and run on micro integrator to debug, we have to select debug at mediation flow. So we'll uh, see a scenario here and we'll try to debug that scenario. Here we can uh, see there's a client and client is trying to send a request to WSO2 micro integrator runtime. Then the micro integrator will send a hello world message to the client as a response. So we will see how this works. So we have created a screen sharing to better understanding and reduce the time here. So let's see that. Okay, now, uh, so let's, uh, now let's see the screencast here. So just click the integration studio and select the work workspace as I mentioned earlier. So you see the getting started page. And now I want to create a hello world service. As I mentioned in the scenario, just click on the hello world service and give a project name as hello world sample and click finish. So once you uh, finish, you will get a uh, you, uh, the developer preview like this. So just right click on the hello world sample and, and go to run as and click run on micro integrator. Then select the artifacts which you need, then click finish. So now we can see the micro integrator 
is getting started and we can see in the bottom right the integration uh, the progress bar is running so in, in the console view we, we can see that the micro integrator has started now open the command line and we have a template guide preview also in the template uh, at the right hand side in the template guide preview you can in, uh, to in, uh, invoke this service copy the curl and open in a command line and invoke that service with a curl command so now we can see a hello world response from wso2 enterprise integrator in the command line So now we are trying to modify the proxy service just to see how to redeploy the modified artifacts into the server. For that, we are uh, adding a log mediator into the proxy service. And we are setting the log level to full. And now we are trying to redeploy and uh, right click on the hello world sample and uh, click run as and the micro integrator and select the relevant artifacts and you can see the uh, micro integrator has started then uh, uh, invoke the service using the curl command as i mentioned earlier so now you can see the hello world response getting printed in the command line as well as in the console you will be able to see the uh, log log mediator log message so now let's see how to debug this flow so right click on the log mediator and add toggle breakpoint so this is using micro integrator that is internal server how to debug the integration flow using the internal server and add a debug point to the respond mediate as well now to start in the debug mode right click on the hello world sample go to debug as and debug configurations sorry uh, mediation debug and select the relevant artifacts Click on finish. So you can see the micro integrator is getting started. So in the template guide, just uh, copy the curl and invoke in, in the command line. So once you invoke, so you have to confirm the perspective switch. Click yes. So now you can see. It, it's it automatically changed into the debug view so uh, 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 we can see that the log mediator is get hit first and uh, in, in the debug view we can see the message envelope as well as other properties and the variables over there so now just resume it so now we can see the debug is getting hit at respond mediator. So and we can see the in the response mediator the hello world message there and the properties and variables as well. Now click the resume button and stop debug and just change back to the uh, integration studio UI. Yeah, so so that's how we uh, we are using the uh, internal server for debug. Now, with the same scenario, we'll see how to deploy and debug with the external runtime. For that also, so external runtime, how to start this at a new server is you have to go to the help in the getting started page 
and you have to direct to the miscellaneous and add a new server. We'll see how to do that in the, in the demo. So for the external server also, we are using the same scenario. That is a client is sending a request to WSO to integrate yeah? and the integrator will send a hello world message back to the client as a response. So, so now we have started the integrator studio and we are in the welcome page. We are going in the, we are pointing into the miscellaneous and yeah, click on add new server. And in the pop-up window, select the relevant enterprise integrator package, which you have uh, installed locally and click next. And then we, uh, you have to point the carbon home, just browse, click the browse button and just give the location where you have installed the enterprise integrator. Then uh, here you can set the uh, carbon service port and web console port as you want. So I'm just giving as the default value and click finish. So there are many services. Click on the Hello World service, give a name to the project as Hello World sample. So we can see the right hand side, the server view. In the server view, the, whichever the enterprise integrator ver version we have selected, you can see that in the server view. Just right click on that enterprise integrator and click start. So you can see in the console view, the server is getting started. Once the server is started, it will automatically direct to the management console. So the survey started. Now it switch back to the management console view. Yeah, so this is the enterprise integrator management console view. So if you see the carbon uh, application list, we can see the hello world composite application there. And if, when you double click it, you can see the hello world service. Now we'll switch back to the uh, integrator tooling view. So in the template guide, try to uh, invoke the service with the curl command. And we have to uh, here in the curl command 80 to 90 is the default port for the micro integrator, but we are running the server externally. so. Externally, the port is by default is 80 to 80. So we have to offset by 10. And just invoke the service and you can see the hello world is getting printed as a response in the external, uh, using the external server. So now we are trying to modify the proxy service just to see how to redeploy the modify artifacts into the server, which is an external server. For that, we are adding like uh, two log mediators. So one is log level simple and the other one is log level full. So click on the one of the log mediator, the second log mediator and set the log, log level as full. and save it. Then in the server view, just right click on, on the hello world sample composite application and really uh, click the redeploy. So now it will redeploy the server. So, uh, sorry, redeploy the carbon application. So again, uh, invoke the service with the curl command, 
don't forget to offset the port to 80 to 90. And you can see the response is coming from the enterprise integrator. And you can see in the console, the log mediators are getting, the messages are getting printed. So now we are trying to start in the debug mode. For that, what you have to do is you have to click the run. And uh, you have to select the debug configuration. So uh, select the ESP mediation debug as shown here. And right click on it and click new. Give it a name that as external debug config. And the debug mode as remote. And click apply. So before clicking to debug, we have to up the server in the debug mode. In the external server in the debug mode. So what we have to do is you have to go to the location where you have installed the enterprise integrator and go into the bin folder and start the enterprise integrator in the debug mode using the following command dot slash integrator sh minus d esb debug is equal to true. So this command will start the enterprise integrator in the debug mode. So when, when you start in the debug mode, the debugger will listen to the port. So you will get that message. So until that, just wait. So now, now you can see the Synapse debugger interface listens on port. So once you get that message, go back to the integration studio. And now click the debug button. So now we can see the survey is getting started in the debug mode. And in the console, we could able to see that Synap debug and figure configure a synapse, synapse debug environment created successfully. So now to confirm, we had uh, just uh, invoking the, before invoking that we, are, we have to, uh, we have already start the server in the debug mode. Now we have, we are going to add debug point on the mediator. So right click on the mediator and select toggle breakpoint. Payload mediator as well as in the response mediator. Then try to invoke the service using the curl command in the management console. And make sure you have to offset the port there. So once you enter, so it will give a pop-up message that can confirm perspective switch. Click yes. So now you will see the debug view. So as similar, you can see the message envelope there. And now this resume. So now the debug point will hit from payload mediator to response mediator. And now resume the flow. And now you will be able to see the hello world service in the as a response in the command line.
so that is the very basic simple scenario so what we we have seen so far is how to use the internal server for debugger that is which is coming in the integration studio used with the mic which is the micro integrator and how to debug using an external server where you have to deploy the carbon application and you have to start the in the debug mode in the external server that's a simple scenario uh, now we'll see how to debug a complex scenario so now the uh, rosen will explain how to de uh, debug the complex scenario rosen is over to you hi okay and so this scenario is a bit complex um, so the idea is to show you how to how the how a developer is going to use our tool to develop some um, scenario web service or something like that so for this i, I have chosen a, a content based sounding scenario uh, which will the when which will uh, respond the client with the um, arithmetic operation say for example if a client send a request uh, to add two integers it will go to micro uh, our server and then it will route it to addition route it to addition a num addition endpoint and get the response back to the server and give it to the client so if the client is sending uh, a request to divide two numbers it will go to the micro indicate uh, enterprise indicator and then it will route to a to the number division endpoint and get the response back to the client so this this content based routing is happening uh, based on the content of the message so the so the client who is sending the message will send the operation as well here um, so let's see how how to uh, let's see the recorded screencast for this scenario so let's start with the integration studio and with the with a fresh uh, workspace here so let's create a new project here uh, let's name it as the as a arithmetic operation um, project so this will create the uh, structure for the this project actually so this is a fresh uh, structure so we are we need to add a first we need to add the endpoints the uh, the legacy uh, so pain points here so we are going to add so name it as arithmetic operations endpoint and we are going to add the uh, legacy endpoint here so this one is the endpoint that we are using so when you click finish it will add the this endpoint to the uh, our project now let's uh, change it the format to soap 1.1 because this that's the supported soap version there so now let's add the new proxy service new uh, synapse api here so let's give a name to our new synapse api and uh, context which we used to call that api arithmetic dash operation so let's finish to add this new synapse api here so this is a empty synapse api resource so let's first uh, make this enable for post request also so since we are going to send post request to this api now first we have added a property mediator the idea is to get the user input whether the operation is addition or division to get that uh, property we we, we, just, we are just adding a new property we are naming it as uh, request type and to get that property from the message message body we need to have the expression here so let's see how what is the request payload here so this is the expected payload for add operation so if it is a division operation we need to change add to divide so it will divide argument one by two so in this case it will add argument one to two so this is the request pay request structure here so from that structure we need to extract the operation first 
So using the property mediator, we are extracting the arithmetic operation dash operation, which gives us the operation, whether it's add or divide. So that's, that's how the XPath works. So arithmetic operation, under that we have operation. I click OK. And then we are going to log it just to see what the request is. So we are logging the same property here. So that property contains the request type, actually request users requirement, whether to add or divide the number. So let's add a log mediator here and add that property to that log media. So that log mediator will, will be like printing this one. Um, yeah. Now let's add a um, switch mediator that, that the, if the request is add or divide, we need to switch, we need to route according to that one. So we are going to add a switch mediator. We need two branches here. So we right click it on the switch mediator and we are adding two branches here. So this source XPath is the, the decision making uh, XPath. So it, 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 it checks for this one, whether it's add or divide. So we already created the property for this one. So as you can remember that, that name is request type. So we are going to get that property here. So request type property, we are going to uh, switch based on this property. So this property is actually the user's choice, whether it's addition or division. And now the cases, the first case should, uh, would be add. So if the, if the uh, request type user sending is add, it will go to first case. Now, uh, the second one is divide. So if the user's requirement is to divide two numbers, it will go to second case. It will get the case regex here and match it and go to the, um, the given case branch. So if, if the addition is there, so first branch would like get invoked. For that, we are going to uh, create a payload which we need to send to the backend. So this payload is like the structure is this one. So it says add the integer argument one and two. So we are passing dollar one and dollar two here. That means we are passing arguments, dynamic arguments here. So that would replace this dollar one and dollar two with the following arguments. The arguments are, we are going to get it from the user. That is from the expert, from the same request, arithmetic operations says arg one. So that is the argument one we are getting from the user's request. So we are going to map it from this one to uh, backend's payload. So we are going to add, do the same for the second argument also here. Okay, now click finish. And now we are going to add a header mediator. That the idea of adding a header mediator here is to specify the action, so action header. So we need to have a soap action header here to say that this is an addition thing. So the first case is addition. So we need to specify this addition so painful. To that, we need to get the addition so action header. So we are setting it this here. Now, now all is good to go. Now we need to add a call mediator to call the uh, so backend, which of course is a uh, legacy so backend, which gives the addition of two numbers. So we have done with that. Now we are going to do the same to the second branch, that is the divide, division branch. So if the user's requirement is to divide two numbers, it will go to this branch. So we have already specified the um, regex pattern here to divide if to come to the second one. So this is the payload for divide the integer. So this is the requested, uh, required payload for the endpoint. So back in to divide two numbers. So here also we are going to pass the arguments here. First argument is user's argument one, that is the client's argument one, you arithmetic operation argument one here, and we click OK. Right, all right, now we are going to add the second argument, that is user's second argument. Get the body and from the body, we are getting the second argument here, and we click finish. Mm. Now we are going to add the header mediator here also. 
remember this is the division we are going to divide the numbers here so action headers should be division so action so value return is this, this divide integer so action header value so we are setting that here now we are going to add the call immediate as previously uh, with the given endpoint there to divide two numbers here the third branch would be the default branch so say user send a request uh, expect like expect uh, addition or division so it would not be supported by this our this this sample example so what it what it do is it, it goes to this default branch so that means we are not supporting that so we are just sending a users user back a message saying that this is unsupported input here so we are finally adding a respond mediator that in any case it will respond back to the client so now the thing is like we have integrated the micro indicate runtime here so this is like hassle free just you can click on the run and it would run so you don't have to configure anything this is the like the, this is why we have integrated the runtime into the tooling itself so it would run inside easily so that's the like developers normal use case here if you if you are a developer what you do is uh, you develop the use case and you run it and see whether it works that's, that's 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 what we are doing here so we have created the artifact we are then now running the artifact here so it will start the micro integrator runtime with this service so now let's go to the uh, terminal and try to invoke this rest api so here we are going to uh, Use, using curl we are going to send a post request to our local host 8290 which is the micro integrator and arithmetic operation we have created we have given that name to our api so this will send the request to the server runtime and give the result now we have got we have got the result but the thing is uh, as if, if you can remember we are we have asked the server to add two integers that is 10 that is um, say that is 10 plus 25 but we got the answer as 20 so there should be some error that this is the this is how we identify the error so if you run a test case like this so it should print 35 but it's printing 20 which is incorrect now we need to debug that's 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 the like usual way of uh, identify your bug so we identify a bug here now let's see how to debug using our integration studio to that the first way to do is like we can't go from top to bottom it's like tedious work what we can do is we can uh, put debug points here and there like we can put debug points in our flow so that we can see the message context here and there and we can identify whether we can get a clue on what did fail actually so for this thing it's, it's the addition so it's the first branch should is, is failing so we are adding um, debug points from the start so we have started the debug debugging flow here so this time also as you can see just right click on the our, our project and run debug as and we click on mediation debug that's all you have to you need to do to debug a scenario the, the external server configuration is a bit more harder so either way you can choose any option here so we are uh, for this demonstration we are using the internal one since it's very easy to do so now we have uh, turned like started the server in the debug mode uh, now we are toggling a breakpoints to see whether which 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 media is failing here so for that we are adding toggle we are adding debug points for the property in the first case and we are adding debug points especially for first case more debug points because that's what we are that that's what what is failing now we after adding the debug points we can send the request again to see what is happening in the server so now this is asking for the perspective so this perspective is very friendly for you to understand what is happening so this is the message ending loop as you can see this the the, the property media is getting the correct um, message 
so say asking add 10 plus 25 say it, it is now correct in here now let's go to next mediator so payload factory in the payload factory also the message in loop seems to be okay it's like 10 and 25 that means it's okay here uh, now we are going to next mediator by uh, saying uh, continue uh, here you can see the add integer is 10 and 10 which is wrong so we have asked to add 10 plus 20 um, but here it's it has changed so now we can identify and you can get a clue that uh, the, the error happened in between payload factory because the property mediator it was okay in payload factory also the request was okay but from header mediator the request is not okay so that is uh, the, the property fact payload factory is anonymous so we can just go to the source view which gives the xml view of our configuration and we can identify uh, which 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 um, part failed so here after seeing this uh, you can see that uh, we have passed wrong arguments here argument one and two we pass both as same arg one so we have changed this to arg one to arg two the properties now it should work fine so that was the bug here so we have identified the bug and we have fixed the bug using the in, uh, integration studio debugging phase facilities now after fixing that you can stop the debug stop the debugging flow now you can um, now it's fixed and now you can run the service now we can run it run and um, see whether the request is the, the, the service is behaving as expected so it should give the correct answer as 35 10 plus 25 should give 35 so we are starting again not in the debug mode this time because now we have fixed the bug we are going to start it and see whether it works fine now if we send the curl it would give uh, yeah it should give 35 yeah now it's working that's how we debug the simple like this is a simple bug but of course we can you can get the idea how to debug a complex one through this one so it's like basically like divide and conquer method we we are trying to divide it into separate parts and we are trying to identify which causes the bug so now let's see how to skip a mediator this one this is also a useful um, feature that this tool allows you to do so to skip a mediator what you can do is you just right click on the mediator and you can click uh, skip toggle skip point So we are going to skip a log meter and see whether what happens. So the internal server runtime has started. So we are going to okay. So so it give it's 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 giving the log here. So since we have the log mediator, you can see the log is printing. So we are going to skip this one now we are going to toggle skip point that which means it will skip this log mediator so the synapse execution won't be going through this log mediator so it shouldn't invoke the log mediator so we can't see any log here hereafter so now we are sending the request again and we are getting the response but this time no logs here that means we have skipped this log mediator so this function is very useful if you want to skip some uh, anonymous parts so that's the skip functionality now let's see some more tools that to tools related to debugging that we are like facilitating with new tool so here is the view overall view so here we are going to discuss how to manipulate properties so as you may know wso2 servers work with the, these properties like there are uh, access to scope properties access access to client scope properties and uh, transport properties and also synapse properties all these properties you can inject or clear property using this debug flow that means in the debug flow you can uh, remove or inject a new property to this flow and that would function as it would have that um, property here so if we add a new property here it will take from that point onwards the execution will take that property to consideration so 
So these are the access to um, properties here and transport and finally synapse properties. So the, the, since it is now the, the debugger is hit on the first mediator, that is a property mediator, we still should not have this um, request type property that we are creating. After the first mediator execution only, we would see the request type property because we are adding that in the first mediator. So here you can't see that because it's, it's still in the first media. So if you go to the second mediator, you should see that request type is there. The request type is there and the value is add because we have sent the request with the payload add. Now you can see that add property is there. Here we have a table, simplified table. You can add any property to this table just to view and get an idea about the property. So if you want to monitor this request type, you need to go to properties characteristics and synapse and add this request type of a new property here. So if value is property, value is add. So now let's discuss how to um, manipulate these properties. So as this is, since this is a add property, so the request is add, it will go to the first branch, right? All right, that now, we are going to send the request again. This time also we are giving the same request as add. Now let's see how to manipulate this add property and we can change it to any, any property that we like. The value we can change through this um, debug while debugging so for this you may go to request type here and you can change the value from here so change value you are going to change it to divide now the property is changed to divide now it should not go to the first first switch case it should go to the second switch case because the value is now divide as you can see now it goes to the second even though the request is addition, it will go into the second second uh, switch case and it, it will divide the number. So that, as you can see, the answer is 0.4, that is 10 divided by uh, 25. Yeah, it's 0.4. So that even though the request is addition, we got the division answer. That's because we manipulate the properties from the tool itself while debugging. So during that execution of that flow while debugging, it would change the it, it change the property. This is also a very uh, useful feature when you are develop when you are debugging a like fairly complex scenario. You can change properties here and there and see how it works. So finally, we'll see how to see while logs. In this case, while logs we can uh, see for resources, APIs, API resources, and also proxy services and mediators like call and send mediators. So here you can see the dialog here. So we have sent the request using curl, that is request dialog and response dialog is, what, 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 what was the response here? So that was the answer given by the backend. For the call mediators also you can just right click and just you. The important thing is we need to have a toggle breakpoint here and we need to hit that breakpoint before getting a while log. So if you need to have the while log for call mediator one, we need to hit the breakpoint first and then you can see the while log for call mediator also. So after executing the call mediator, To show the violence here. So this time you are getting the request. As you can see now the dialogues are printing here. All right, that's the first demo, that, that's the first scenario we are 
we have discussed that that was to give you an idea about how to debug and stuff and uh, the, the next use case is a very, uh, it's, it's also a very simple one. We need to uh, give you the idea of how to debug a message transformation. That's a data mapper mediator. We use to um, map data. So this 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 example would um, convert the XML payload back to a JSON payload. So you user send the request with the XML payload, and the server is uh, transformation it from XML to JSON and respond back to client in JSON. This is a very common use case these days. So for this one, we are using a, a sample here. So we have, with the new tooling, we have the template for XML to JSON transformation. So we, I have bit modified a bit on that one to like for demonstration purposes. So this data mapper would convert the XML payload to JSON payload. So this is the XML to JSON um, transformation happening. So you have the input here and you have some operations in between and you have the output JSON there. Now we, we are going to invoke the service and see what, what is happening here. So for that we have uh, created a um, we need to create a post request with the XML payload here. So we are using Postman to send this uh, request here. After sending this XML payload, you will get a response as a JSON response. So here you can see the JSON response here. Here also we have made a small mix mistake. The name and the postal code are like changed. So that also that for this one we actually don't need to debug in that level because we have introduced a new real-time data mapper preview here. Right? Like um, there's a real-time data mapper preview view uh, in the bottom. So what you can do is you can in, in the real time you can uh, see what is happening in the data data mapper mediator. So you can change the first name from like first name and last name and try it out and see what is the expected output. Then this is the, exactly how it it works in the runtime. So you can just try out and see what is happening. So if you press the try out button, you can see now the the request and the, uh, the in, input and output. So there's the small mistake with here. So it it won't give the correct name and the postal code here. So we have mista like mistakenly um, mapped wrong postal code and city here. So after correcting that, you can see if you add a new, say, a postal code and a name, yeah, it's printing, hello, and it's the postal code here. So after that, you can confirm that it's working fine with this new configuration. So you don't have to go to debug mode or anything like that because we have this real time data mapper preview here. You can run it and see whether it, it works correctly. This time, yeah, you are seeing the correct postal code and correct name. So that's all we have to discuss. We have discussed for today's webinar, and this is the summary. That so first we have looked how to debug and run using our internal server runtime, which we have made the new improvement, which which, which let you to do debugging easily. And we have discussed how to do the same thing with the external server runtime, and we have discussed uh, adding breakpoint, which is very important for debugging and also skipping mediating, skipping mediators while debugging and also adding and remove and changing properties like synapse properties and other properties while debugging and viewing HTTP dialogs. And finally, we have discussed about the real-time data mapper viewer we have introduced with our latest version.
all right thank you for participating uh, now if you have any question you can raise ah let we are going to um, uh, we have one question here uh, are remote servers supported yet or deploying debugging still only on local host um, we still support remote deployment and debugging we have not discussed in this this webinar even though we have not discussed it is still supported uh, next question is if my wso2 ei is installed remotely instead of my local how can i use the same way in wso2 id um, remote debug also you can use the same we, you can refer to the documentation of our website so we have not removed the remote uh, debugging functionality and remote um, server functionality yes you may, you can do that uh, uh, the third question is that uh, uh, can we run the local wso ei server in debug mode with id instead of running from command prompt um yeah this this is also we can do that yeah um also we have uh, some more questions uh, yeah um is it possible to see y logs for all mediators uh, actually no we only support uh, for the proxies and apis and call mediator and send mediator because that's only what we uh, encounter with uh, HTTP uh, files. Um, yeah, another question. Um, um, is hot deployment works in the micro integrator runtime? Uh, actually, no, we don't support hot deployment since the micro integrator is very um, lightweight thing. So it, it would boot very fastly. No, uh, that's, what, that's why we have removed the hot deployment functionality from it. Uh, ben, uh, we have another question here. Uh, is Ballerina Composer part of EI? Um, if not, how to download? Uh, Ballerina is actually not a part of EI. It's a separate um, project there. So you can refer, go to ballerina.io for further clarification. The, um, also, Ballerina has this new um, VS Code plugin which allows you to um, visually see and um we should see and of course uh, run and debug the mediations flows um you can download it by by visiting the ballerina.io uh, so seems like we have no more questions so if you have any more questions you can raise it like via our developer email channels like uh, or you may face via email or you can contact us yeah thank you for part of it, your participation we are going to end this webinar